Have you ever tried to compile a TV series, submit it to that generic online TV series email, then hear nothing again? What happens? What happens to the great idea that you thought is the only one in the world? Well, I've got Janine Oppermann here, and she was on the receiving end of thousands upon thousands of these TV pitches. And she had to make the tough decisions, who's going to show and who's not. Janine, thank you so much for joining us today. This is such a lovely interview, and <laughs> I, I have so many questions about this because I've submitted some TV series ideas, and your guidance I think for all of us oh. filmmakers would be so le- so valuable. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. Yes. <laughs> Janine, my word, you had such a colorful career getting to eventually working at DSTV and CakeNet. Would you mind sharing your your time from an actress right through to DSTV and then we'll jump into the pitching and TV series uh, concepts. Yes, of course. It was um, great uh, blessed uh, opportunities. Yeah, I was an actress. I was never one of the stars, a very famous actress. I was more of one of the B-listers. Dubbing was my bread and butter. Ah. Um, uh, and radio, I loved radio. It's a beautiful medium. But um, yeah, so I eventually started working behind the camera uh, and then I got a job at Mnet as, um, in the in house productions department I did some production manager work uh, then I was appointed as a commissioning editor I left for I was um, left for being I was a head wa- a writer at Villa Rosa versus Soapy for two and a half years sure, my then creative I went stripe back. coming through there yes. in the edge there <laughs> not just admin <laughs> <laughs> and yeah then I went back and um, produced shows like uh, charge shows like Dear Cantia Dear Cantia Gospel those kind of things um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, then you start climbing the ladder. I was head of uh, a couple of channels. Kuya was head of, and Cakenet Music, the Cakenet Now channel. And then there was a big restructure at Mnet, and they mm. split the um, scripted content from the non-scripted content. And then when, um, I was appointed as senior manager of all the reality and entertainment shows on Cakenet, which wow. was fantastic. Yeah, what yeah. a journey! Yes. So let's dive into it because I mean. Don't you just hate those YouTube videos that take so long to get to the actual topic? Yes. So let's get into the dirt of it. So <laughs> li- how does a show get funding? Okay. There's two models. There's the, you've, you've got the primetime shows. That's between 7 and 9 p.m. Um, those shows are like planned. 18 months in advance. Oh, wow. And those, that's the, 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 the cream of the crop. That's mostly scripted. Um, big reality formats, news, that kind of thing. And that's funded by the CakeNet budget and sponsors. And then you get the AFP model. That's the advertiser-funded programming. Uh And that's where the whole production, um, all the production costs are covered by sponsors, total sponsorship. When I I create this masterful PowerPoint that I have just put together, I export in PDF and I submit to that generic email address – who receives it? What happens in that dark void on the other side? That's the void that we call the yeah you know, the portal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, interestingly, though, uh, even if you know someone at um, at the channel and you you sent an email that's not going to work they don't look at proposals unless it's submitted through that portal it's wow. very important i think the first thing that happens is that you get a reference number and you know your ip is safe because i think lots of people are worried about the idea being stolen and funny enough you get a lot of proposals it's exactly the same i oh. mean this you know, it's crazy because us creators we we think every one of our ideas are the original the best yeah exactly but uh, yeah, and then there's uh, a lot of them coming in, and there's a sifting process, and then once a month there's a panel that sits with the with the with the proposals that that they look at. The sifting gets rid of the because there's lots of people that just sends in a photo or something, so there's lots of things coming through the portal that's not really proposals. So there's someone that gets rid of, gets rid of all those, and then it's a process of uh, selecting what is a probable show or what's not going to work. And um, I think the no's uh, are, are quick ones. Um, let me say, yeah, if, you, if you've p- submitted a proposal and you don't hear anything back for 90 days, then you can accept that, it's, that it didn't go through. But if a proposal is successful, then the um, channel will contact you and they will make an appointment or they will just ask questions if they need more information. And then they'll 
invite you to pitch in person. So that's basically the process. But yeah, for giving you an idea of what gets a no, is it's mostly shows you work with, um, you first think of your demand. So as channel, you will, the, the, the proposals that gets a quick no is shows that's already on the channel. Okay. You, know, you can't mm. pitch a fishing show, you already have a fishing show, right. for instance. So do your research, first of all. Yes. Oh, that's uh, so important. Um, <clears throat> so you uh, will see you know, if it's something that you already have or is it something that you need, there might be a gap in the market that the, the guy that proposes saw, which is fantastic. So that's the demand. Then you'll, you'll look at the experience of the producer that's pitching the proposal, the idea, Um I think it's a very good thing to uh, to tell you guys is that if you don't have experience, if you have a brilliant idea and you don't have experience, you don't have a show reel, you don't have a track record, a reputation, first pitch your idea to an existing producer that already has a relationship mm. with the channel and go via that route. Because it's very, very, it's not very often that they will um, say yes to someone that they don't have trust in. That's it's somebody that's going to be deliver mm. the production value. Um, sometimes it's, it's really, I mean, it happens that you, you get a really good idea and then the channel will decide to match you with a, pr a producer and, and it's sort of a oh, ment mentorship wow. relationship that's that wonderful. happens. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but Advice, good advice is to rather go via an existing producer if mm. you don't have experience yourself. So it's experience. Then the big thing is uh, finance. Mm. Uh, you, th it must be a concept that, that will attract sponsors. Um, that sponsors will be interested. Mm. And getting sponsors is getting more and more difficult. It's mm. really tough out there finance-wise. And mm. um, that's a big challenge. So it must be a concept that you know will be... Um, attractive for sponsors mm. um, and the, your budget the other thing about the finance you have to submit a budget it's not a detailed budget but um, and uh, that's a very quick way of of the channel seeing if the producer knows what he's doing a budget is a very good indication of um, the director's mm. ex or the producer's experience and then your last thing that that plays a big part in that selection process is your target market mm. um the channel knows their target market very well and if it's a, an idea that's maybe too niche it won't fly if it's something that has the potential to maybe to be too controversial it will not fly. I mean, mm. you will kn know yourself if you do your research well that if you have something that's a bit risque, you will not pitch it to a cake net audience. You will rather go to a showmax audience mm. for something that's okay. more risque. So, mm. so kn knowing your target market is very well. You know, that's sort of the criteria mm. that 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 is at play when they I select the show. suppose risque also um, makes sponsors quite wary. Uh, to to yes. connect their brand with yes, right, uh, so you obviously get your tongue in cheek brands, yeah. and they're very, they're, but they're very few and far in between. Mm. Um, and you sp you spoke about Latville, but there's so many car brands. Yes, and um, and also in terms of budget, you, they, I find that often the the per minute budget is quite important, right? It everything yes. boils down to per what minute. will this cost me per minute. That is it. Yeah. Um, with the AFPs. Once you get your AFP, CakeNet says, listen, love the show. If you get the money, we'll broadcast it. Yes. I experienced that the support from the sales team was incredible. So once you, you, you obviously need to do the groundwork. Yes. And they really make it sure that they give you eyeballs, bang for buck for yeah. a sponsor. Yeah. But you get a ton of support from the from the, from the the sales team as well during yes. that so they'll, they'll help you close those deals they'll but they'll yes. make sure that so you're yeah. not alone in that journey from there no no you have to do a lot of work though mm. um so yeah so once you once your your proposal is successful you'll have uh, sessions with the channel and you, you get a commissioning editor and they'll fine-tune your format they'll look at the title is the title working is the content Perfect. Uh, so they do a bit of work there. Then you get an allocated time slot in a couple of months' uh -huh. time. They work in. They work in um, quarters. So so the schedule works from January to March, April to June, July, etc. Ah, okay. So 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 a program is um, 
yeah, so they pick a slot in one of those quarters, and it will always start in January or start in April or start in July. Um, and once you've got a time slot, then it goes to DSTV Media Sales, and they design a, a finance pack for you. And with that finance pack, you go to your sponsors and look for sponsorship. Yes, and as and they will support you as much as they can. Mm. They will go to meetings with you, and mm. they do the deal eventually because mm. the deal between the sponsor it's not a contract between you and as the producer and the sponsor, it's a contract with these TV mm. media sales that the sponsor signs. Mm, that is that, that is amazing, and I and I think that's that's what we we must. What I, what I also love about the moment they give you a a, a slot, which is called a TX, your broadcast date. Yes. Um, you then also have an estimate of how many possible viewers will actually watch the show because there's so yes. many statistics already yeah, and data. Yeah. Yes. That sh show gives you an exact more or less number, exact more or less, yeah. a, a, a number of viewers that you will attract to yes. that show. I mean, that's that just helps you to have those data sheets ready. So sponsors, this is what you'll get yeah. for, for, for this amount of money, which is which helps you a lot. Um, so I think what... what but but let's let's delve now into the shows that eventually they went through every hurdle. They're successful. Why? Why are they successful? Why? And 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 let's talk about the guys that even got another season. Yeah. What what made them so attractive to viewers? Um, because we need to think about the channel also as a business, right? They need to make money Absolutely. as well. They need to pay salaries, yeah. overheads, the shebang. Yeah. So that's why. And and they're in the business of show. Yeah. And. So when that show hits and they get the viewers, tell us more about what attracted viewers to watch from beginning to end. It's a secret. <laughs> oh, you, no. you, can, you can expect, I mean, we always, sometimes you get surprised with what mm, works or what doesn't yes. work. I think one of the amazing things that happened in, that, that we have now that we didn't have 30 years ago is social media. Mm. Mm. you know it's an interactive relationship you have with your viewer immediately you know very quickly mm. what they like and what they don't like and what they want mm. uh, but your 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 big thing is ratings um mm. a show success is is really um all about the ratings and the eyeballs mm. and that's and and the amount of sponsorship it attracts ironically i think social media is also a competitor to tv right <laughs> so you have this kind of like yeah. A love hate relationship. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. can market the TV show, yeah. but can also be a eyeball competitor yeah. um, at the same time. And in that, we're seeing so many players in this yeah. field all of a sudden it's dividing a totally eyeballs. It's a different audience, though. Is it right? Yes. You know, your social media viewers are really much younger. I think where your cake knit audience is more mature, for instance. So let's jump into me as a creative, and you've you've been seeing so many pictures. Does original ideas still exist? That is such a good question. It has to. Mm. That's what they want. The channel will always, when they put out a brief in the industry, they will say, we look for something. We're looking for something fresh, new, original, unique. Mm. Uh, I think it's very difficult. Um, if you think about something like Squid Games, it was a game changer, I think, and that's... So it's possible. But I think we live in an era of references. In all pictures you get, you, it's a, you get a cross. This, is a ref, it's a, 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 this show is a cross between this and that, and it's a bit of this and a bit of that. So it's sort of um, mm. a mesh-up of, of things mm. that already exist, and, and hopefully with an original angle that you look at something that already exists. So yeah, I think an original idea is very, very difficult. Um, but one should try, mm. at least. Mm. Do you have any stories of shows that you that you're very proud of? You know that you oh, that you took a, took a journey with the producer, and you know it's it's kind of like wow, this is such a such a delight that it's worked. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Plasi Api is one of those. It's really interesting. Um, yeah, because we've Burke Frau is a yeah. phenomenon. <laughs> yeah. There is nothing like that. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Really? Yes. Um, um, and every year we think, okay, fine, this is the last yeah. season. <laughs> it can't, it can't be popular anymore. Yes. And then it, uh, it just gets, it's a top writer every, every no. single time. What? It just, uh, while talking about Boutique of, uh, um, I mean, you, you know, it's an international format that's yes. produced in lots of territories, uh, but South Africa has the 
biggest success rate with true love. We've got, I think at this stage, at least 25 weddings already, 25 marriages that, that was generated through the show. And if you compare it, like, um, I think Australia, in 12 seasons, Australia only had nine marriages. What? So we are... Um, Actual oh, true love yes, success. Yes, yes, yes. That is amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Wow. Uh, but yeah, plus, yeah, plus, yeah, um, it's um, infinity films are actually in... in um, Somerset West as well, I think. Wow. Uh, but they, uh, it was we, it was at the event of Fiestas or somewhere, and the producer was standing. We, we were talking about the success of something like Bulshuk of Fro, and the guy said, "Yes, like, but you must make a, a show like with Plas Yapi," and 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 that was the and that was where the idea was born. Karen liked the name Plas Yapi, and she um, tossed us the reality team to to get together and start playing with ideas and and then we met with them they were the production team and we gave them a development contract wow. um, and so yeah so spent a lot of time and created the format yeah. from scratch yeah. and yeah. Uh, they're doing the, the, they've d done their second season now yes. so that is very exciting to create because we do a lot of shows that's international formats and that's very safe you know it's a tested recipe mm. and you get lots of um, um, I, uh, uh, yeah the, the well, format holder helps you a lot. Yeah, it's a Be guarantee. People know I mean, what to expect. Just, uh, when we decided to be uh, the millionaire, mm. I mean, that's mm. a no-brainer. Mm. Of course it will work, you mm. know, and especially with Rian yes. presenting, you can't go wrong. So that was a sure thing. But yeah, it's, 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 it's a bigger risk. It's a calculated risk, but it's a bigger risk yeah. to do something that's totally new. Yes. And But it's exciting to develop a format here and, something that we can go and mm. sell then to mm. other territories and mm. um, uh, make sure that it's got legs that will travel internationally. So let's jump on a TV format mm. because a format there can often be, you can find yourself on IP ground where there's a specific little recipe and if you actually copy and paste a little recipe in your own style, you could actually move into a little bit of a legal problem as well. Yes, there must be, a, yeah, there's, there is a, there's, I, I can't remember. Say it, there must be six distinct differences mm. uh, uh, to make sure that. So you know, you can borrow ideas from other formats, but you have to make sure that it's it's something totally different. Mm. Yeah, you know, in most of the important aspects. So, so I'm I'm moving now beyond your career over there. Um, now you've jumped back into the production side of things, and you brought you are guys are full tilt in production on a show as well. What is your experience now moving from the decision maker into the one that has to do the proposals and the pictures and the actual production and deliverables? Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think I've got uh, um, something going for me. In the, I mean, because being on the other side, you know exactly what they want and what right. they're looking for right. and what you need to have in your proposal. Mm. So it helps. It helps to to have been on the other side, um, but yes, it's 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 ex exciting to be on this side as well, and um, especially doing pictures for CakeNet is, yes. is wonderful. It's t like talking to old friends, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but in there yeah. now. <laughs> I'll still use the same email address as the rest, but you know who. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen, as a as almost as a send off um, advice for. Uh, we, I, I see so much talent in South Africa, and we, you know, when we when we sometimes uh, put out a job offer, it, it's so hard to decide to who will make be part of the team and not because yeah. of the incredible passion of telling stories, and 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 we're all kind of in the same boat. We would love to tell these stories on a large platform, and yes. television is such an amazing platform to do so. What advice um, would you give to the starry-eyed dreamers um, wanting to put their stories out there? Um, it can be beyond TV as well, but um, in your experience with, it, with, with your colorful career and what you see happening in this landscape mm. at the moment. Homework. Mm. You have to do your homework, um, research, um, knowing where your idea will fit the best uh, if you have your kind of show and I mean Google is your best friend hey mm. uh, AI now chat GPT I mean if you're looking for answers um, 
but you have to do intensive research. You have mm. to know what is the best platform for your idea. Like I said earlier, is it something risque? Then you will go to a streamer uh, instead of a more uh, conservative channel. I won't want, don't want to use the word conservative, but mm. yeah, a more family, wholesome, family right. orientated mm. uh, platform. Mm. Um, so you have to do the research. You have to know what is showing on that channel. What is the uh, uh, is URL, what, what's the kind of viewers? You have to know what, who's the target market for your show. You're not making TV for yourself. Mm. Um, you're doing it for some, you're making it for someone else to consume. Mm. So the research is very important. Uh, uh, and then your presentation, your, that, whether you do it on Canva or PowerPoint or whatever, that PDF that you submit, is a, is a, it shows your talent, it shows your creativity, it shows what you are capable of, it's a testament to what you can create. It must be, you must really spend enough time on that, make sure there's no spelling mistakes, I mean simple things like that, that actually uh, makes a difference on, mm. on, on the reception of, of, of your presentation. So yeah, your presentation is extremely important. You must make sure that you have all your elements in there, your budget, your look and feel, your references, your synopsis. And and that synopsis that you start with is so important because it has to be short and 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 it must stimulate interest. It must be mm. you know, one sentence, one paragraph at most that tells the one that reads it for the first time exactly what the show is about and that must pique the interest. Um, so your, your presentation, your research, your finance thing is very important. You have to make sure that your idea will attract sponsorships, uh, that your budget is a reasonable, a rational uh, uh, um, um, guesstimate, that mm. it's that realistic is actually mm. the word, mm. a realistic mm. guesstimate, mm. Uh, that it's something that you that you will be able to deliver the product, uh, that that money will be enough. Um, then your your team, the team that you that you get together is, is so important. The, the well, Whoever is commissioning your show will look at your track record as a uh, as a producer, um, your director is very important, your DOP, all of those key personnel needs to um, tick the boxes of, of, of being excellent in what mm. they do. And then your target market, yeah, your, um, your target market, uh, knowing who you're making the show for is important, but then that also connects to marketability. Mm. You have to be convinced that your show is marketable, that it will um, yeah, pick interest of, mm. uh, g yeah, g get people to come and watch mm. it, and, um, mm. be a, can it be an appointment viewing mm. program? Does pilots and scissor reels still work? Yes, yes, mm. yes. Uh, if you can do a sizzle reel, that's the best way uh, to get a good response, okay. definitely. Um, if you can afford that, I will strongly recommend a sizzler. It doesn't have to be long. Well, shorter mm. is most probably better because most of those people are very, very busy mm. and not a lot of time. Uh, but your sizzler is... How would you correct. explain a sizzler? It's a... Um, it's a seller. You have to sell your concept. So uh, it's a... Um, it's not. It's not about uh, like a promo or a trailer for a movie. It's not. It's not. Its intention is not to to get people to watch it. Its intention is to convince someone looking at it that this is a product that we need and that we can uh, get, make make money out of. <laughs> Perfect. It must be commercial. Uh, that's something I should have said earlier. Hey? Mm. Commercial. It's a, uh, yeah, uh, your, your show must be commercial. It's, yeah. it's a, uh, very important. So your, your sizzler will be, you will show the, you will have, you, you will obviously give the content, the, what the show is all about is in there, uh, the look and feel of the program, all of that. Um, but it is to convince someone to buy it. Perfect. A sizzler, again, Google some good sizzler examples mm. and it'll be a superpower that you add to your pack when you when you when you do your proposal. Yeah. Listen, Janine, um 
I am so inspired and excited and I really believe that what you shared with us today will give a running start to to filmmakers planning their next show. And thank you so much for spending the time with us and uh, making a possible dream a reality. Thank you, Jakobus. It was great talking to you. Call me anytime. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Stunning.